so, um, you know, basically that that part of the discussion of depletion is based on faulting or induced faulting. Uh, now we're just going to talk about just the deformation due to depletion, and that deformation can can you know, help you or hurt you. It can help you for a while and hurt you later, right? And to do this type of stuff, you, re you really have to use some of the more advanced um, stuff we've learned in this class, uh, coupled with a really high-resolution computer code, essentially. Um, so I think a lot of this, you know, we won't be able to actually solve any problems because we're just, you know, we're not sort of beyond the scope of the class to to um, run that. But if you if if you run CMG or you run some of these codes that can do geomechanics along with reservoir simulation, I mean, these are some of the equations that are s it's solving. Um, although, you know, for example, CMG's forte is not really geomechanics. So some some of the more advanced research, finite element codes and stuff are probably better at this um, this kind of thing. So if you recall, there's compaction curves. In other words, you know, if we squeeze a rock, then the porosity will change as a function of the confining pressure. Okay. And so this is a bunch of uh, tests that were done uh, actually in that these are unconsolidated sands. And these were done on that Gulf of Mexico field X, which we looked at as a case study a few weeks ago, maybe last week. <coughs> and uh, so th these were actually cored and brought to the surface. And these were tested in the laboratory. And you know, one thing you notice, there's something um, right here that they call the pre-consolidation pressure. Okay. And effectively, what that is is that's sort of the in situ pressure at which they were cored at. Okay, and so if you if you pull them out and bring them to the surface and take them to the lab and you do tests on them, well, as you can find them, the, the porosity change is kind of small because you're just reloading along the same path, which is elastic. You're just reloading along the same path to bring it back to the pressure it was in the earth. And you don't have any kind of inelastic effects, right? Remember, you know, when you have plasticity, which is what we're sort of getting at here, inelastic effects due to hydro hydrostatic pressure. That was a that was a test question, right? One of the multiple test questions. You know, if you have a stress strain curve, remember if you you start off and you just go there, it's elastic, and if you continue to strain it, you'll you'll you can enter a rain a, 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 a an area of plasticity, right? Well, then if you unload it, it's going to unload elastically. If you unload it all the way to zero, there'll be some <laughs> permanent strain. Okay. And then if you reload it from there, you already have permanent strain in the rock. So if you reload it, you're going to just reload along this path until you reach that point, and then you'll continue to advance the into the inelastic behavior. So. I guess the point I'm getting at here is that what you see here is there's very little sort of porosity change in any of these samples until you get past, and, and it was only in a couple of them, that they took it past the, what they call the pre-consolidation pressure. So the, essentially the in-situ pressure, the in-situ confining pressure that they took it out of. And at that point, then you see sort of this steep, or steeper decline um, in the porosity. As a function of confining pressure, right? So this is, this is your now you're you're, you're creating new plasticity, if you will. Right? You're, you're on that blue, the top part of that blue curve. Right? So the, the blue line here, up to where it meets the top of the red one, you're just you're just tracing along where it's already been loaded. And then now you're actually compressing the pores inelastically. Right? Um, that dashed line is a model. Uh, and in my opinion, not, not a very good one, but it's a model uh, for these guys, Yale et al., for compaction curve in unconsolidated sands. <coughs> and the model doesn't take into effect that there's some sort of pre-consolidated pressure. So <coughs> if we want to use a constitutive model for a rock, 
that can incorporate the effects of inelasticity due to increase in confining pressure, what does the yield surface have to have? And what are those models called? This was a test question. Right? In cap, right? Cap model. Right? So, so a normal sort of more Coulomb model doesn't have doesn't have any effect. There will be no plasticity due to increasing hydrostatic pressure. An in cap model will have that. And we talked about one. We, we didn't solve any problems with them, but we talked about one. And it's sort of the simplest one, and it's, we call it the Cam Clay model. So again, this is a, this is a sort of, I think we, we saw this figure when we talked about the Cam Clay model. And we had this sort of P, Q space. So P is the hydrostatic pressure. Right? So this is the you trace, you know, the sum of the diagonal of the stress tensor divided by three. It's the average pressure, okay? Okay. And then this is a measure of shear strain, essentially. So this is like shear strain versus confining strain. And here's the shear failure line defined by essentially uh, the internal friction angle. And so then these elliptical regions here are the caps. Right? So this is so this sort of region here is where the state of stress would lie. Anything above anything above this would be would represent shear, shear failure of the material. And anything along here would represent inelastic, you know, as we push these caps out, it would represent inelastic permanent strain due to collapsing the porosity. Okay? <coughs> One of the issues from a reservoir setting is that. Uh, in order to use this type of model, you have to continually know what the institute stresses are, which would mean during depletion you'd have to continually, you know, do something, right? You'd have to go out there and do a, a mini frack or something during the depletion. Um, and so, in order to use the type of this type of model in the form that it's in, it's very difficult to estimate how the stress changes or deformation would occur due to you know, it, what we're trying to come up here is sort of a quasi-semi-analytical model or something we can do some back-of-the-envelope calculations on to understand how depletion is affecting the stress changes and, and or deformation in the reservoir. Of course, we could always put this in a transient, fully coupled geomechanics code and just solve everything, right? But if we, all we know is, say, the pore pressure change or the bottom hole pressure at a well over time, and we want to use that information and, and say we had some initial information about what the minimum principal stress was initially, then essentially what we can do is we can transform this sort of PQ space. And remember, P and Q are defined like this. These are for the Cam Clay model. So that's what I said it was. It's the, it's the, the effective hydrostatic stress. I think I, I forgot to mention the pore pressure term, but this is the effective hydrostatic stress this is a shear stress, and then this is the this is an equation of ellipse, right? This is an equation of ellipse that defines those sort of end cap model. And so then if we just plug in, if we just plug in our SH min, SH max, S vertical, and the pore pressure into all those terms and just rearrange the equation a little bit. And the M uh, works out to be this. This is the failure surface. Uh, in this case, for a, a negligible uh, strength, like if it was a sand, uh, then you get this, uh, this equation. And then this equation you can use to parameterize the reservoir space. 
uh, like this. So now, now we can estimate, you know, so, so that equation essentially was used to plot change in pore pressure, pore pressure, S3 is a function of pore pressure. And then from that, we can determine these ellipses are the reduction in porosity. So if we start, this is an actual test case from the Gulf of Mexico, where you know the initial porosity was about 30 percent, and as we depleted the well, right, which means the pore pressure is moving this way, as we deplete the well, then the porosity changes permanently along this line according to that model. Okay, and these data points were used to construct it, this model. So this represents, you know, if you can't see it, we start at 30, then, you know, this is 29, 28, 27, 26.4% por porosity, right? So over the depletion, <coughs> and I think this well, I think we showed it was depleted something, something like 80 megapascal, so, or 60, maybe it was 60, right? So during the depletion of this well, you get like a 5% reduction in porosity. Now, why do we care about that from a reservoir simulation standpoint? Does porosity affect the permeability? Right? There's a, there's a um, common relationship between porosity and permeability? Maybe you learned about it in petrophysics or something? Anybody know the name of it? Kozeni, Kozeni Carmen? Yeah, okay. 